On September 17, 2014, an alien ship crashed on Earth. The aliens, called the Atrians, fled from their dying planet and went to seek refuge on Earth. But the humans thought it was an alien invasion and attacked them, leaving the Atrians no choice but to defend themselves. A young boy named Roman ran away and hid inside a shed in the backyard of a house. A young girl named Emery noticed that the door of the shed was opened and went to check. There, she found an alien boy hiding in fear. While everyone else showed no compassion to the aliens, Emery was the only one to show kindness to young Roman. Their friendship didn't last long as the military came to apprehend Roman. Young Emery tried to protect Roman, but to no avail as the military shot the Atrian boy. Ten years had passed since the aliens crashed on Earth. Within those ten years, the Atrians had been rounded up and isolated in a militarized sector. Humans continued to show their hatred for the alien invaders, complaining about the alien ship that is still casting a shadow over the whole town of Edendale and demanding for the Atrians to leave Earth. But the U.S. government didn't listen and instead made a controversial effort to integrate the Atrians into society by letting seven Atrian teens study at Marshall High School in hopes of the Atrians learning the human culture and vice versa. Knox, Roman's father and the Atrian advocate and spokesman expressed his appreciation for his people being given the privilege to coexist with humans, albeit the cruelty they are receiving. Roman is among the seven Atrian teens and he was greatly astonished when he looked up at all the students watching them and saw the once young girl who protected him ten years ago. Just like the Atrians, Emery had also just started attending Marshall High School. She spent four years confined in the hospital because of an immune deficiency and is now able to attend school. This sickness of hers is also the reason why Emery joined a school club that volunteers at local hospitals with her new friend, Lucas. During break time, Roman approached Emery with the pretext that he was just going to ask about the club Emery is a part of. However, Emery was uncomfortable with the stares they were receiving from the other students and unintentionally came off as if she didn't want Roman to join their club. Roman noticed her discomfort and walked away only to be stopped by his newfound bully, Eric. Fortunately, Roman's Atrian fellows, Drake and Terry, stepped in before things could escalate. After school, Emery visited her sick friend, Julia, at the hospital and found out that Julia was planning on going home because the chemo wasn't working anymore. Emery didn't want to see her friend give up just like that and sneaked her into the Atrian sector in hopes of finding a cyper. A herb Atrians are supposedly growing that helps in curing any type of disease. They ran into trouble after sneaking into the sector and were fortunately dragged somewhere safe by Roman. Roman had brought them to the garden he and his father built on a rooftop and there were a lot of cypers. But Emery and Julia's hopes crashed when Roman told them that cypers were actually used for cooking. Julia was fine with it and was even thankful for Emery's efforts. Julia was shivering due to the cold and Roman gave her his jacket. That's when Emery saw the scar on Roman's stomach and discovered that Roman was actually the young boy she met in the shed. The next day at school, Eric was bothering Sophia, Roman's sister, and Roman warned him to stay away from his sister. Eric started a fight, and Roman was the one who got blamed for it due to him being an Atrian. Drake was furious because of this and decided to pay Eric a visit. The Atrian boys, excluding Roman, went to the party Eric was attending and sent a message for the partygoers to leave them alone. Roman came minutes later to stop Drake from doing something that might affect their whole kind when the cops came to stop the party. Roman saw Emery getting knocked on the ground by the partygoers fleeing and decided to help her, but Grayson, a schoolmate who has a crush on Emery, pulled the ladder away from Roman. Roman's friends had already left the scene, and Roman didn't know where to go. Emery sees this and chooses to leave with Roman instead. After escaping the party together, Emery received bad news about Julia and rushed to the hospital. Julia's state had gotten worse and Emery was scared that she'd lose her best friend. Roman sees her pain and decides to give Julia a miracle. He sneaked into Julia's room and used a cypher mixed with his blood to heal her. Meanwhile, Knox learned that his son sneaked out of the sector right before curfew and the Atrian who helped sabotage the signal on Roman's bracelet, which allowed the latter to sneak out, was caught. Knox attempted to alleviate the situation, but one wrong move from the Atrian caused Ray Whitehill, Emery's father, who works at the sector, to open fire, which accidentally killed Knox. After the death of their leader, a group of Atrian terrorists called Trags became more hostile and kept on causing trouble to the guards in the sector to show the humans that Atrians are not powerless. Roman and Sophia helped in preparing for their father's ceremony, and Roman was irked when his mother, Maya, informed him that his uncle Castor would be the one to prepare for his father's Ogman. The term they used to refer to their traditional ceremony for a fellow Atrian's death. Roman believes that Castor has an ulterior motive because he has always hated Knox. Emery converses with Julia, who is now completely healed from her sickness and is planning on attending Marshall High School. Julia talked about the blue angel she claimed she saw the night she was healed and Emery just told her she was imagining things. Emery actually knew that Roman was the one who cured Julia because she found the cyber Roman used. 
At school, Emery tried to talk to Roman to apologize for what happened to his father and to thank her for saving Julia. But Roman denied helping Julia and told Emery to keep her distance. Ray Whitehill felt bad for accidentally killing an innocent Atrian and announced that he would be taking a temporary leave of absence from the force. Gloria Garcia, the U.S. liaison who initiated the integration program, then announced the upcoming carnival, which she planned on letting the Atrians join. Robert Varton, a member of the Red Hawks, which is a group of anti-Atrian humans, protested against Gloria's plan and tried to change the minds of the board members about letting the Atrians join a human tradition. However, Emery gave a speech about giving the Atrians a chance and a reason for them to trust humans, convincing the board members to agree with Gloria's plan. The Wadab, or Atrian Council, or the elders leading each Atrian tribe, summoned Roman as he is supposed to become the next leader of the ruling Zwahan tribe after his father. Castor volunteered to become the temporary leader of the tribe because Roman was still too young to lead them, but Roman didn't want to trust him and insisted on becoming the next Ixon, the term used to refer to the Atrian leaders. Castor tried to convince Roman that he changed and was to be trusted, but Roman wasn't easily convinced. Emery and Grayson are conversing about the unfortunate incident that happened at the sector. Grayson believes that Ray didn't mean to hurt anyone, but he also feels for Roman as he knows what it feels like to lose someone so dear to you. Grayson opened up about his brother, who was a National Guard who died on the Atrian's arrival day. The Atrian Seven were on their way to the carnival when Roman noticed several members of Trag's gathering inside a container. He discreetly watched the meeting and learned that they were planning on avenging Knox by harming Emery. At the carnival, Roman told Emery about her life being in danger, but Emery was stubborn. She insisted on hanging out with Roman despite knowing that their closeness poses danger. Their little friendly date was interrupted when Terry told Roman that Drake was missing. The two Atrians went looking for their friend while Emery stayed with Grayson. Emery saw Eric cleaning the trash, but he wasn't on trash and this made Emery suspicious of Eric. She followed Eric with Grayson, unaware of an assassin planning on eliminating her. It was Beaumont, the guard temporarily replacing Ray in the sector. Roman caught him and stopped him from killing Emery. It turns out that Beaumont is an Atrian who got his markings removed in order to disguise himself as a human, and he's a Trag member. Beaumont decided to drop his mission and left the area after warning Roman that he was being watched. Roman headed back to the bus but was stopped by Julia. Since Roman was in a hurry, he couldn't stay to talk with Julia, who was frozen on her spot, staring at her arm, which was glowing blue. Lucas approached Julia and joked about her looking like she'd seen a ghost. Julia only muttered that it was a blue angel she saw. Meanwhile, Emery and Grayson caught Eric hiding a tied-up Drake in a truck. Eric was ordered by Varton to kidnap Drake but failed when Emery and Grayson caught them. Grayson pulled out a knife and threatened to use it on Varton if they didn't leave. Varton heeded Grayson's threat and left, leaving Emery and Grayson to free Drake. After the carnival, Grayson secretly met up with Varton. It is revealed that Grayson knew what Varton was planning because he, himself, is connected to the Red Hawks. Since the Atrians had already learned some of the humans' culture, Gloria arranged a plan for the Atrians' human classmates to visit the sector so they could learn the Atrian culture. After class, Julia told Roman that she knew the Atrian had cured her with a cyber. Roman brought her to a storage room to ask her to keep it a secret, but then Julia took off her clothes, revealing the glowing veins on her body. Roman learned from Castor that glowing veins are one of the side effects of the cyber, and they can be cured by eating a vire, an herb that the Awabas tribe is growing. But time is very limited as the blue veins are quickly spreading and will become permanent once they reach the face. During the humans' visit to the sector, Emery and Grayson mostly stayed together, documenting their experiences with the Atrians. Emery wanted to share the video with the other humans and make them see that the Atrians meant no harm to them. Concurrently, Roman was asking Terry for Vire since she is part of the Awabas tribe, but Terry refused to help him. So Roman resorts to sneaking into the Awaba's grow house with Julia to find a vire, but he is caught by Vega, Terry's mother, and the leader of the Trags. Vega threatens to torture Roman if he doesn't tell them why he was there, and Roman lies about being on a date with Terry. Terry agreed and distracted her mother, giving Roman and Julia the time to sneak out. Meanwhile, Drake had been recruited by Vega to join the Trags and the Atrian teen eagerly accepted. After his short training with Beaumont, Drake was immediately given a mission. After the visit to the sector, a commemoration ceremony would be held near the Atrian spaceship. While everyone was busy with the event, Drake sneaked into the Atrian spaceship to retrieve a cube for Vega. At the event, Terry handed Roman a vire, and the latter secretly gave it to Julia. Julia ate the wine inside her car to prevent anyone from witnessing what was about to happen. As she ate the vire, her blue veins glowed even brighter until she was emitting a blue light all over her body. 
Roman, on the other hand, stayed at the hotel to watch the Atrian Sector documentary Emery and Grayson made, but the Red Hawks hacked the computers and played another video showing a few Atrians being aggressive towards humans. It is to make the humans attending the event believe that the Atrians are indeed planning on colonizing Earth. Roman stepped onto the stage and gave a speech about wanting to coexist with humans in peace. He mentioned the young girl who saved him during the arrival day and expressed how he wanted to be able to walk the streets with that girl freely. The humans were moved by his speech, but Terry wasn't. She followed Drake into their spaceship and helped him with his mission, stating that she is now going to embrace her destiny as the daughter of the Trag's leader. The event was successful and Roman was commended for representing his nation. Meanwhile, Emery discovered that Grayson's parents are the Grand Patriarch and Monarch of the Red Hawks. Grayson tried to explain how he wasn't a part of the group and he doesn't agree with his parents leading an anti-Atrian group, but Emery was having none of it. After a successful mission, Drake and Terry handed the cube to Vega. Vega put a cyper inside the cube and it turned into a black cyper, a deadly plant whose spores can kill humans and Atrians alike. Vega tested the Black Cypher on Beaumont, who was revealed to be secretly working for Castor, and both Drake and Terry watched in fear as the Black Cypher killed Beaumont. Gloria headed back home and accessed a secret room where she was hiding her biggest secret, an Atrian boy. Sector guards received a tip that Roman's family was hiding a restricted technology and ransacked their pod. Once the sector guards left after finding nothing, Maya showed Roman and Sophia the restricted phone Knox was hiding. Roman volunteered to get rid of the phone but secretly asked Julia and Lucas for help retrieving data from the phone. After successfully retrieving the data, Lucas informed Roman that Knox was only texting with just one person. But there was nothing in their messages that could tell who the other person was or what they were hiding. But Lucas encrypted a video from the phone. Before Roman could watch the whole video, Gloria caught them and destroyed, destroyed the, the phone and the device containing the phone's data. So Lucas focused on searching for the person Knox was secretly talking to. Emery and Sophia were discussing the school's swim team and Sophia expressed how she loves swimming. Emery requested that Gloria let Sophia join their swim team, but Gloria disapproved because the board members believed that having Atrians participate in sports would be disruptive to the other students. Grayson helped persuade Gloria to let Sophia join the team. There would be an upcoming swimming competition with a private school called Collier, and with Sophia's skills, she could easily help beat Collier swimmers. Gloria relented and left to convince the board members to agree. After what Grayson did for Sophia, Emery decided that he deserved to be forgiven for hiding the fact that his parents are the Red Hawks leaders. She thought it was unfair to blame Grayson for having Red Hawks parents when he, himself, hasn't done anything wrong. The news of an Atrian joining the Marshall High School swim team spread around and people weren't happy about it. On the day of the competition, the Collier students had arrived and one of them approached Sophia, faking a friendly demeanor as she gave Sophia a sports drink as her way of showing sportsmanship. Gullible Sophia drank the drink and the Collier student dropped the facade as she admitted that the drink had caffeine, which the Atrians are allergic to. Sophia started gasping for air. Roman and Emery brought Sophia into the locker room so Roman could use the cyper on her, but one of their teachers, Miss Eva Benton, entered the room and refused to leave until the paramedics arrived. Roman couldn't use the cyper as it should be kept from humans because they have such an herb and since Sophia was having a severe allergic reaction, Emery decided to inject her with the epinephrine. A risky move as they didn't know if it works on the Atrians. Sophia suddenly stopped moving and stayed still for a few seconds before gasping for air. Roman was relieved to see that his sister was fine. Meanwhile, Terry confronted the Collier student who made Sophia drink caffeine and banged her head against the Collier student. A fight ensued between the Marshall High School students and Collier students. Even Eric helped in fighting against the Collier students. The fight was only stopped when Gloria threatened to expel them. Gloria reprimanded the students for fighting with the Collier students, but she was also happy that, for the first time in history, Atrians and humans were fighting alongside each other. Even though the competition was canceled after the unqualified disaster, the Marshall High School swim team still decided to hold a swimming competition on their own so they could give Sophia a fun experience. That night, Emery and Julia were talking about the cyper when Grayson came to talk to Emery. Emery and Grayson had their moment together, which ended with them kissing, unaware that Roman was watching them in jealousy. Lucas approached Roman to tell the latter that he was unable to find out who the person Knox was texting. But they at least know that whoever it was, that person is a human who lives in the suburbs. Gloria headed back to her home in the suburbs when she received a call. It was revealed that Gloria was the one who tipped the sector guards about the restricted technology in Roman's family's home. It was also revealed that Knox had been having an affair, and the Atrian child Gloria was hiding was her son with Knox. Lucas had successfully tracked down the phone Knox was texting, and it was just somewhere inside the school. 
He and Roman looked for it, and when they found it, there was a seemingly blank note that came with a phone. It was a note left by Knox, and only an Atrian can read it as they can see farther into the UV spectrum than humans. Knox mentioned Elgida, a place where Atrians live deep in the bayou, free from humans. Elgida used to be just a fairy tale that gave hope to Atrian, but now Roman thinks it might be real after all. The Atrian teens are given permission to visit Edendale, and it was an opportunity for Roman to look for Elgida and for Drake to complete the new task he was given. With the help of the note and the directions Lucas gave him, Roman searched for Ebbing Sun Road, where he saw blue tracks leading somewhere deep in the woods. He followed the blue tracks, unaware of someone trailing him. Concurrently, Drake discreetly left a note under a bench. He was tasked with meeting up with the Trag's contact outside the sector so they could proceed on a bigger plan. After leaving the note, Drake and Terry went to the bar where he was supposed to meet the contact. There was a tiny error when Taylor approached Drake, who was waiting for contact. Drake, assuming that Taylor was the person he was supposed to meet, followed the blonde girl into the restroom where they did the devil's tango. He quickly realized his mistake when he returned to the table and found Terry talking to their classmate Zoe, who turns out to be an Atrian who got her markings removed. She is a Trag who has been disguising herself as human so she can stay outside the sector as the Trag's operative. Drake and Zoe went to the place where Beaumont's body was buried and Drake dug up the grave. Zoe put a cypher inside the cube and they watched as it turned into a black cypher. Drake buried the cube with Beaumont's body and they left it to grow. Roman, on the other hand, had found Jaster's hideout. Jaster was believed to be the gatekeeper, the only one who could lead them to Elgida. Roman waited for hours, but nobody came. He was already losing hope that Elgida was real when Gloria, who had been trailing him, revealed herself. Roman felt betrayed when Gloria admitted that she had been having an affair with his father and left. Gloria stayed by the docks and waited until Jaster finally came. Jaster wasn't welcoming to her because she is a human, but Gloria handed him her son, begging for him to take her son to Elgida and keep him safe. Jaster agreed since the child is an Atrian and Gloria tearfully said goodbye to her son. Emery was on her daily morning run when she caught journalist Matt Bandel following her. She questioned why Bandel was following her, and Bandel showed her a video of her and Julia talking about the cyber. He plans on releasing the video to the public, and Emery couldn't let him do that because she knows how keeping Cyper a secret is very important to the Atrians. She offered to find a juicier story for Bandel to publish, and Bandel agreed, promising to delete the video and drop the Cyper topic. At school, Emery watched the news of the Red Hawks turning from a mere group of Atrian haters into a terrorist organization for attempting to attack the sector last night. Grayson reassured her that the Red Hawks in the news might have gone rogue because he believes his parents can never hurt anyone, not even Atrian, no matter how much they hate them. Emery trusted Grayson's words and agreed to be Grayson's date at the ball that was going to be held in his home. The couple was so busy in their own world that they didn't notice Roman watching them from afar. But Drake did, and he told Roman about Grayson's parents being the leaders of the Red Hawks. Zoe invited Drake to the ball for their mission, and Roman decided to tag along as his plus one so he could watch Drake's actions and prevent him from doing something stupid. But Roman got distracted by Emery and Drake secretly talked to Zoe. Drake briefed Zoe on their new mission, which is to kidnap Zoe and use him to get his parents to free the Atrians imprisoned in the crate. Meanwhile, Emery and Julia were trying to come up with a plan to stop Bandel from releasing the video of them talking about Cyber. Julia wanted Emery to just tell Bandel about Grayson's parents being the leaders of the Red Hawks because that is surely a much juicier story than the Cyber, but Emery didn't want to betray Grayson like that. So when she learned about Eric attending a Red Hawks meeting after the ball, she decided to help Bandel catch them in the act, which would then give her an opportunity to use the device Lucas gave her to corrupt the file containing their Cyber video. Julia approached Eric so she could find out where the meeting was being held, and fortunately, Eric was gullible enough to fall for her tricks. Roman was looking for Emery to tell her the truth about Grayson's parents. When Grayson found him lurking about, the two of them almost got into a fight, but Emery came right on time. Roman urged Grayson to tell Emery the truth, but his plan backfired when he realized that Emery already knew. Roman walked out, his heart heavy after Emery's betrayal, and Emery chased after him, profusely apologizing for not telling him the truth. Roman expressed his anger at Emery pretending to care about Atrians, and Emery explained why she couldn't tell him about Grayson's parents. Emery was also upset at Roman for avoiding her like a plague, but that anger dissipated when Roman told her about the Trags wanting to kill her. He only avoided Emery to protect her because he knew if the Trags ever saw him with a human girl, they'd be more determined to kill her. Roman reassured Emery that he is doing everything he can to protect her and also gain freedom for his people without causing a war between humans and the Atrians. Roman confessed that he would give Emery everything if he could, but with the way things are, he's afraid their being together might put Emery in a lot more danger. Roman walked away and Emery was left with mixed feelings. 
She went back inside the party to look for Eric and warn him about the Red Hawks meeting. Eric agreed not to go and Emery went inside a van with Bandel to record the Red Hawks meeting. Emery created a distraction for Bandel to step out of the van for a while before she connected the device Lucas gave her to Bandel's tablet, successfully corrupting the file containing her cyber video. She then continued watching the meeting with Bandel and she was appalled to learn that Grayson's mother was planning on planting bombs in the Atrian's pod, which would certainly kill hundreds if not thousands of them. Meanwhile, Roman stopped Drake and Zoe from kidnapping Grayson. Zoe attempted to kill Roman but was stopped by Drake. Zoe flees, knowing that she is outnumbered and Drake carries Grayson so they can bring him back home. The next day, Grayson's mother was arrested for leading a terrorist organization and Grayson, who couldn't remember what happened to him the night before, went to Emery's house for comfort. Emery, on the other hand, was talking to Julia about her conversation with Roman. Emery was guilty of getting his mother arrested and for lying to him about her true feelings. Emery admitted that she wanted to be with Roman and that she would rather have stolen moments with the Atrian teen than freely date Grayson. Emery planned on breaking up with Grayson right away, but when Grayson visited her with a forlorn expression, she just couldn't find it in her to break his heart when he clearly needs her at the moment. Unbeknownst to Emery, Roman also came to visit her and was saddened at the sight of her embracing Grayson. Grayson planned on confronting his mother in jail and asked Emery to come along as support. Emery agreed as she didn't want to make him any sadder than he already is. She met up with Julia and told her friend that she was planning on staying with Grayson for a while, just until Grayson was okay. Julia reminded Emery that she can't stay with Grayson out of guilt as it wasn't unfair for both Grayson and Roman and Emery knew her friend was right when she already felt more guilt hitting her upon seeing Roman enter the bar. Zoe was waiting inside a car she stole and watched as Taylor headed to her car with plenty of shopping bags. Lucas, who saw Taylor struggling with the bags, helped her. He opened the door of Taylor's car, not knowing that Zoe had stuck a tiny leaf of black cyber in it. As soon as he breathed in the black cyber's pores, he collapsed and started gasping for air. Emery found the black cyber and showed it to Roman. Roman and Drake decided to work together to get rid of the black cyber and went to ask Castor for advice. Castor explained how the black cyber affects those who breathe in its spores and handed the Atrian teens a bomb they could use to destroy the plant. Roman and Drake had a limited time to destroy the plant because Drake had planted the black cyber eight days ago and it had already grown. Soon, the plant would release its spores and kill probably all humans in the town. Roman and Drake returned to the hospital and told a worried Emery that the only thing that could cure Lucas was a freshly cut black cyber mixed with Atrian blood. Emery demanded to join Roman and Drake in finding the Black Cyber, and Roman couldn't object anymore. While Roman and Emery went to the place where Drake buried the Black Cyber, Drake asked Taylor for Zoe's address, convincing the jealous blonde that he only wanted to talk to Zoe. Roman and Emery reached the place where the Black Cyber was supposedly buried but found nothing. Then Emery received a call from Grayson asking where she was. Emery apologized for not coming with Grayson but didn't tell him why she couldn't be there for him. So Grayson confronted his mother alone and refused to believe when his mother told him about Emery being the one to tell Bandel about her. Meanwhile, Drake had reached Zoe's home address and was hit by an arrow from a trap he had accidentally triggered. He pushed himself off the walk and called Emery after finding out where Zoe had brought the plant. Roman and Emery went to the location Drake told them about and were attacked by Zoe. Roman goes against Zoe while Emery goes to plant the bomb on the black cyber after picking a tiny black cyber leaf to use in curing Lucas. She turned to leave but the black cyber had grown and blocked her way. Roman, on the other hand, was overpowered by Zoe. Luckily, Drake appeared and told Roman to help Emery while he dealt with Zoe. Roman saw the situation Emery was in and broke through the plant, grabbing Emery and jumping into the lake right before the bomb exploded. The two kissed underwater and kissed some more after leaving the water. Drake called out to them and told them about Zoe being caught in the blast. Roman and Emery returned to the hospital, where Emery urged Lucas' mother to eat out with her to allow Roman to cure Lucas. Sophia barged into the room before Roman could start and asked to do the process because Lucas is her close friend. Drake, on the other hand, went on a date with Taylor, lying about Zoe leaving due to family problems to avoid Taylor worrying about her friend. Meanwhile, Emery finally decided to let go of what was holding her back from breaking up with Grayson. After what happened, it just made her more determined to be with Roman. She and Roman walked out of the hospital together and shared a kiss before parting ways. Unbeknownst to them, Grayson had been watching them from afar. If you enjoyed the series, please let us know in the comments section for more series like this. Take care.